Let's solve this radical equation. We got the square root of 2 square root of x plus 3 equals square root of 2x plus 2. Now our first step is to get a radical by itself. And actually we have a radical by itself on both sides. Because we've got a single radical equal to a single radical. So we're going to go ahead and square both sides. That's step two. Raise both sides to a power equal to your index. Now remember when you, um, uh, your index, the number in the slot here, matches the power you're raising to. They cancel each other away. So we're left with 2 square root of x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 2. Now um, we're down to step 3. It says if you have more radicals, go back to step number 1. So we're going back to step number 1. Step number 1 says get a radical by itself. Well, this radical is not quite by itself. We've got a 2 in front of it. So we're going to divide everything by 2. So we'll divide that by 2, divide the 2x by 2, and divide the 2 by 2. So we get square root of x plus 3 is equal to x plus 1. So we got the radical by itself. Uh, step 2, raise both sides to a power equal to the index. Again, this is square root, so we'll square both sides. So we got square root of x plus 3 squared is equal to x plus 1 squared. Again, the square root um, and the second power cancel each other and leave us the x plus 3. Over on the right side, x plus 1 squared is x plus 1 times x plus 1. Well, FOIL this, multiply everything together, x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x, or x. 1 times x is x, and 1 times 1 is 1. Always combine together like terms. x plus x gives us 2x plus 1. Well, we're down to step 3 again. If you have more radicals, go back to step number 1. No, we don't have any more. So go to step 4. Uh, solve for x. Uh, well, this is a quadratic, so we want to get everything over one side. So I'll take the x plus 3 and move it over. Remember, you take anything across here equals your sign changes. So my positive x becomes a negative x. And my positive 3 becomes a negative 3. And we've got x squared plus 2x minus x is x, and 1 minus 3 gives us negative 2. Now this is the PST method. x squared x, no x, and there's no number in front of our x squared. Now PST, we take the number at the end, ignoring the sign, and we come up with three columns. This is kind of a boring one, because 2 is prime. Uh, we list all the products give us 2. we got 1 times 2. In the S column, we add those. 1 plus 2 is 3. In the difference column, we subtract them, smaller from larger. 2 minus 1 is 1. The number we're looking for is a number in our middle term, which is 1. So we're going to use 1 and 2. Now our larger number in the P column, which is 2, will always be the same size as the middle term. So this will be positive. The number we circle in the difference column, D for different signs, means one's positive, one's negative. So if the 2 is positive, then the 1 has to be negative. Now, zero factor property. You get 0 on one side, you factor the other side, you set each factor equal to 0. So we'll set x minus 1 equal to 0, and x plus 2 equal to 0. And we solve these. Here I'll take negative 1 over, and we get x equals 1. And here I'll take 2 over, and we get x equals negative 2. Maybe. Remember, our last step is to check our answers. So if I put 1 up here, uh, 2 times 1 is 2, uh, plus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, so this side's 2. If I put 1 here, 1 plus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, so this is 2. Um, so this one checks. x equals 1. Now negative 2. Now 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 2 is uh, negative 2. Well, right away that seems kind of hinky. We're not supposed to have a negative inside there, but uh, we'll come back to that. Go over here to this side. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Square root of 1 is uh, 1. Uh, times 2 is 2, so this gives us square root of 2. Um, well, square root of 2, and this one's square root of negative 2, so it doesn't check. 
So our only answer is x equals 1.